sort of take you through a little bit of the case study. Some of our pictures will illustrate the same project. And it's a project that's really near and dear to our heart. It isn't an urban project. It is the development of a long-term community recovery plan for the town of Prattsville, New York, which is on the Green County mountaintop, and was literally washed away by Hurricane Irene and Lee. And we came in, and over the last six months, literally just about six months, have been working with a volunteer group of 14 <coughs> consultant firms, which River Street has led, to try to bring back Prattsville uh, in terms of creating a plan and direction. Even though it's a small town, I'd say the scope and scale of the problems they face probably rival the biggest city in New York at this point. Um, total devastation, <coughs> looking at all systems, housing, economic development, community facilities, infrastructure, all at the same time, under an enormous amount of pressure. So the work that we did there, I think, is a good illustration of how we carry ourselves in a community and what the design process, anchoring a planning process, can really look like and how it can feel to a community of people. So just to start out with, I think a couple of points to keep in mind as, as we talk is that one of our claims to fame is that we work with a lot of cities the size of Kingston, urban cities in New York that are facing the same kinds of issues. We've worked in bigger cities, we've worked in towns as small as 450 people. Um, but our, you know, the, the projects we've done for comp plans and zonings together, Schenectady, Troy, Corning, have all been along the same scale as what we're facing here. And the same kind of mix of issues that are typical of an upstate New York community. We have a multidiscipline perspective. We have an economic development practice. We have a planning practice, zoning, and a large practice in public process facilitation and consensus building. So it's a big part of how we approach a project. It's really critical to us, and we were glad to see that it's such an important part of how the city saw its comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance going forward. We have both a very practical, real world group <coughs> and working with synthesis and place alliance, really a, a large international perspective on what communities around the globe are doing to deal with the kinds of issues that you've called out. Livability, walkability, intact neighborhoods, how to accommodate in, infill development, commercial growth, stabilizing the economy, stabilizing the tax base. We're very familiar with the city, having done your waterfront plan, although we were reminiscing, it's some years ago now. It was a great experience for us, and we've worked with the city um, over the past few years trying to get your brownfield opportunity area um, projects moving forward. So um, we, we know Kingston, and we know the region. We have a really high energy approach to what we do. My father used to say, never hire anybody who doesn't look like they're having fun doing their job. Well, that will never be a problem with us. We enjoy what we do, and I think it can be really a critical part of carrying this process forward and carrying it to the in the end, a plan can produce a plan. It can also build a lot of capacity and interest for implementation in a community. And that's one of the outcomes we really look for in the work that we do. Our skills, as I said, are diverse. Planning, land management zoning, community consensus building, urban design, a heavy implementation focus, a real action planning focus on identifying real steps, clear projects, uh, as well as a system of performance indicators and measures so you can hold each other's feet to the fire, hold your elected officials' feet to the fire once you adopt this plan as a visionary document to guide your growth. How do you know you've gotten there? How do you know you're making incremental progress? And if you need to make a change, what implication does it have on other projects that you've made? <coughs> so that piece of the puzzle is something that we've started doing probably over the last five years. And I think we've um, evolved a pretty streamlined system that's affordable for communities to actually to actually monitor their progress. Uh, on my staff, you'll have me, and I'm the principal in charge and principal project manager. Um, my practice is not exclusively but largely devoted to public process facilitation, community consensus building, focus groups, and to practice and dispute resolution around land use issues. And we've never had a difficult meeting in Kingston, but no, give me an unair-conditioned firehouse on an August night with a bunch of angry people over a waste management facility, and I'm the happiest girl in the room. Um, conflict doesn't concern us. We're used to dealing with it. We will try to head it off. But should there be something in your plan, or maybe more likely in a zoning update, the community, the community has a difference of opinion about it. We feel really comfortable that we can lead you through that process in a way that will come out with agreement in the end. And more and more, that is a part of community 
Monica Bryan is one of our principal planners. She's a certified planner who does a lot of our work on land management, zoning, and design standards. And Monica will join us for the questions and answers and, and, um, and talk to you directly about her experience. The other person on my staff is Layla Jabour. Layla worked on, on the other Kingston projects. Uh, and she'll be responsible with me for the day-to-day -day coordination and also the development of what we call a community profile, a sort of foundation document on which the comprehensive plan is based. And then our GIS specialist is Amy Ferguson, and she'll work with us on any map products, including um, the zoning map revisions. From synthesis, we have Ian, who's the director of landscape architecture. Um, he's the, um, he'll be the leader of the community <coughs> workshop, the design oriented piece of the puzzle, and we worked together for, when we were saying, Ian's first job at Synthesis was the waterfront plan for the city of Kingston. So that's 10 years of working together, and we've been working together in this kind of a charrette format, um, and uh, Prattsville is our most recent um, charrette that we did together. Their senior landscape architect is Mary Will Wallinger. Um, Mary's an urban designer, and she will be coordinating their internal resources for the design team. And then we have two architectural and urban designers, <coughs> Javier Roa and Evan Gefell. Javier is also bilingual, he's born in Peru, so in terms of um, being able to deliver content in both English and Spanish, I'm not sure if there are other language needs, but that's something we're regularly called on to do, and I think we can do with the same quality and depth of experience that we can deliver product in English. From Place Alliance, we have Three principles. Place Alliance is an interesting organization. They are an alliance of very small specialists, so from all around the country. Um, Mauricio Castro, also a Spanish speaker, and Mark Newman are from Florida, and they work together. Um, uh, and um, Jeremy Kay is from Colorado, and he's a sort of what we, I call a rock star renderer. His work is incredible, and he's able to take the ideas that the community comes up with and turn them into fabulous visuals that are really helpful in sort of bringing other people to see what the opportunities are in the community. Um, Mark and Mauricio, uh, I worked with Mark on the Prattsville project, and he's just one of those guys that you see him walk in the room and you think, you know, who's that? And he sits down at the table and you're immediately impressed with just the intelligence and the ability to get the, the feel for a community. So we've had a really wonderful working experience with both of them, and they work all around the world. For us, comprehensive planning couldn't be simpler. Four steps. Where are you now? And where are you going to go? So the plan review and background analysis. The community vision. Where do you prefer to go? Hundreds of different choices for where Kingston could be in the future. This is about choosing a shared vision that you will pursue together as a community. How do you get there? Is the question that the action and implementation plan answers. And then in terms of management, measurement, how do you know when you've arrived? Did you accomplish what you set out to do? And that's a really important bond between those of you who will lead the process and the community members at large. Did we do what we set out to do? Consensus building is really the heart of our approach. Excuse me. Um, community members are really the heart of good plans. And we believe that if we can create the right forum and the right venue, that people won't resist their own ideas. Every voice can be heard, and we can help build connections between all the opinions that come forward. It creates a, uh, a, a plan that's understandable, that's widely supported, it makes it, and it makes it much easier to implement. It also makes it easier to stimulate the kind of interest in ongoing working groups and support for specific aspects of the plan. I mean, we have uh, many communities, large and small, that have spun off local development corporations, nonprofit organizations, and then just volunteer work groups that have done hundreds of community-based projects as a result of becoming involved in a comprehensive planning process. I said this earlier, but I think one of the things that distinguishes us is that we've worked in all kinds of communities, but we've worked in a number of the more recent comprehensive plans and zoning ordinances in New York State. And so we've done both for Corning, Troy, Schenectady, Oneida, Rome, Norwich, and we just um, finished last year drafting an update to the city of Poughkeepsie's zoning code, which I understand today is back on the table after a small little hiccup. Um, but 
that we were the fourth consultant brought in by the city to finish their plan. So I am bound and determined that we will finish their zoning ordinance. Um, so again, urban communities, same kinds of issues as Kingston, same kind of scale. Although Kingston is certainly unique among them. I think you kind of, we were mentioning earlier, sort of weather the storm. And um, Kingston always, in my opinion, had a sort of sense of creativity and zest that some of the other communities lack. I think that can work so powerfully for you in this process. And it's certainly one of the reasons that we are very interested and would be very committed to doing this project for you. It's really just, it's a good place to work. It's a fun place to work. In terms of how we approached this request for proposals, we have all the elements of a traditional comprehend process. So scoping, um, committee meetings, stakeholder interviews, development of a foundation document, community profile, vision, goals, and action plan. Um, but we took a slight twist on that and proposed a four-day intensive planning and design workshop, sometimes called in the architect architecture capture the charrette, bringing together all of you with all of us and any other community resources that you have. So if there are local landscape architects, architects, engineers, who would like to, as residents, be involved in that process, there's room for everybody at the table. And Ian is gonna talk about how that process works and how it's worked for us in, in other communities. But it's fun. It lets everybody put their minds together. It gives you the benefit of some international experience and ideas. And it builds a sense of momentum and energy commitment and being in something together that um, has incredible value. In Prattsville, it really, people tell us all the time, it saved them at a tough moment where the only alternative seemed to be <coughs> to lose hope, to start to divide, to see things differently, to face conflict. And this gave people back a little bit of hope. And we're often told, don't raise expectations too high. But the first thing I usually say is, have eyes at high expectations. Have a high expectations of this process. Have high expectations of its outcome. And we won't disappoint you, and a plan you put together, together, won't disappoint the community. So that kind of approach, that kind of intensity that that process represents, I think is a real asset to a community. And it's not the way um, we typically approach comprehensive plans 10 years ago. So it's a much more, um, much heavier emphasis on, on working together rolling up your sleeves, and having a graphic element that for a lot of people really conveys the future in a way that words don't. Um, and then we wind up with a very action-oriented plan, specific, phased, fungible, implementable, practical, yet pushing that envelope as far as you can. So not a wish list, pie in the sky list that you think we'll never get to. Um, some elements of that, of course, you need something to shoot need visionary pieces, but also a real day-in, day-out guide for how to improve the city's city in the way we feel is, is appropriate. I'm going to let Ian take us take you through the sort of the charrette component of the process, and then I'll come back and talk about some. Well, we're, uh, we're really excited about this four-day workshop. We think it's a really good fit scope of your project, and we think that it's going to give you really the, the, the most uh, momentum and the most bang for your buck. This is really a streamlining of, of efforts. It's a streamlining of the public participation, um, which is a very interactive process, as well as the design and the production and the presentation. And through that, we're able to, uh, it's responsive, efficient, affordable, and livable. It's responsive and that it's really rooted in public stakeholder and, and advisory committee participation. And we have a couple different forums in which we do that, and I'll get into more of the details on that. Because of the nature of the intensity and the streamlining, it allows us to just absolutely focus completely on these projects, on the, the general area as well as the catalyst projects that are developed out of the process. Through that efficiency, um, the process is more affordable. Let's just give you more bang for your buck. The deliverables that are going to be generated after these four days and then the refinement of them and final production of them are, are quite astounding and, and tend to be things that you might see after a year of a typical traditional planning approach. Um, and again, because of its rooted nature into the, uh, into the how responsive the process is and interactive it is, we make sure it's a little bit. 
out of this process is the development of three-dimensional graphics, both the massing, um, preliminary SketchUp models that capture it, and then in the refinement stages, you're going to see some beautiful renderings that completely capture the essence of the, the places that we're developing together. And as you can see, it goes a long way in building consensus, uh, developing those implementation and action plans, um, coming to consensus-driven solutions, and eventually coming up with funding sources So the general uh, elements of our planning approach, of course, is a heavy piece in the discovery phase, the plan review and profiling, then the community vision, which leads to the action plan, and lastly, evaluation. Have we met the goals and objectives of the, the workshop and the, the comprehensive plan as a whole? The workshop itself basically has four main components. The beginning part is site evaluation, which we'll get into a Again, the public participation, and the one I want to really stress, which is very different from our approach than what is in the traditional approach, is the storefront charrettes. And our partnering with Place Alliance, we've done this in Prattsville, we've done it in other communities, um, and it's a very exciting opportunity that in the middle of the charrette process, where the design team is, is really cranking out design, we put an open, we open the doors to the public, whoever you think is appropriate to come in, sit down, review the plans with us, offer direct input, um, and then we're going to have our traditional uh, presentations and workshops and more of a town hall style meeting. And really that allows folks several different venues. Some is more hands-on and direct way of getting input. Others is uh, can, where they can stand back, see the bigger picture, and then comment. Um, so it's very exciting in that regard. Really at the beginning of the four-day workshop, we're going to do a lot of hands-on walking, getting out uh, on the street. And by being located right here, uh, it enables us to, through the design process to literally keep going out and double-checking things and making sure uh, that we have a complete understanding, as well as getting local input on specific design considerations that we're going to run into. So that piece of it, uh, the site evaluation and that level site is tremendously important. Again, being right here is going to allow us to get out and really understand the opportunities and constraints of the Catalyst projects that are developed as well as the, the area in general. Lastly, as we, as we jump into this intensive process, it's messy as Margaret says, it's a lot of fun and it's very interactive. Margaret did an incredible job in Prattsville literally probably had a few hundred people coming in and out through this process. And she basically is the greeter. She keeps everything under control. The design team continues working while interacting with she folks. She can still sit on the floor with her legs crossed at my age. That's quite and a she had a, she had a, a group of about 50 people sitting Indian style around a big plan. And uh, well, the, the rest of the design team was continuing design and production. The, the reaction to it was overwhelming really feel that it, it contributed so much to the ultimate buy-in of the plan. Once, uh, once we've developed the plan at the end of the four days, we're going to come back and present it back to the community in a much more refined format. The last day is really about refining and getting it into a, a, a very presentable format and where we're going to be able to get feedback. What do they like about it? What don't they like about it? What might they want to change? some of the low-lying fruit things that can be accomplished in the short term to keep the momentum going. And then uh, we do that through, through throughout the process of the four-day workshop. We're also putting it into a visual, visually oriented presentation so that the graphics are understandable. This gives you an idea of some of the deliverables that you can, uh, can expect this level of plan graphic at the end. So that's a week, a weekend plus another week to generate that graphic. Sorry, press the button. This was actually uh, an example of Prattsville. This was after two days. This is the, on the third night, the final presentation. We were at this level of SketchUp massing um, that we 
the belt did a great job of having the audience understand the concept, both how it would function, how it would look to get the essence of the place. And, and then we sh shipped that off to Jeremy in Colorado, part of the Place Alliance team, and within one week we presented the, the refined graphics back to the community uh, and essentially captured that same thing in a more refined way. But uh, we were very happy with the, the level of the graphic and it, it captured the right amount of detail and most importantly, again, captured the, the overall concept. And this image looks at existing buildings like the Dutch Reformed Church in the foreground and then uses a traditional element like a town common and actually it slopes gradually upward to what would be a newly constructed plateau out of the floodplain so that new development could occur there in a safe location yet still adjacent to the main corridor and main commercial district. Yeah, the, the commons became the critical component because businesses for them to be viable were going to still have to be very visible from Route 23, the, the, main, the main street, but uh, as Margaret suggested, using the common as a way to get those finished floors up. Uh, so the common became both the, the postcard kind of visual element that would want people to pull in and stop and, and, and get out and, and shop and visit the place as well as the functional element of getting out of the, of the floodway. And these were some of the kind of key areas uh, within the existing Main Street area. Uh, again, this level was at one week after the four-day workshop, but we had all these elements in a massive uh, level at the end of the uh, FDA for three days. And then ultimately, we can begin looking at those catalyst projects and further refine them through, through the course of the, of the process. So begin to target specific And then it comes together into a document. And um, what we like to do is to use pictures of people who are involved in the process. It's not about us, it's not about experts, it's about all of you working together to come to your comprehensive plan. Um, so rebuild Prattsville is the phrase that they accepted for themselves. And this is a whole variety of pictures of how people work together um, in the design studio over the weekend. And then we lay out a beautiful document. And in this case, we are working with FEMA to do this. Um, but these are some of the initial phases of what the final plan will look like. Uh, so we like something crisp, clean, graphic, um, that tells the story concisely, but thoroughly. So you'll find long appendices that deal with lots of different information. And you'll find a plan document that's very user friendly, very approachable, and um, something that people from outside Kingston can look at and say, Kingston knows where it's going, I want to be a part of that. The other part of your scope of work um, is to update your zoning, so land management tools. Um, to us, the keys to that kind of process are really four clarity, consistency, simplicity, and flexibility. Codes need to clarify and respond to a variety of issues. They need to be clear, they need to be understandable. My mom's 91, I want her to be able to read your zoning code and stand a chance of understanding what it meant. So humanizing zoning is a big part of how we approach the challenge. Consistency, you need to be able to administer a code without subjectivity. Everybody needs to feel like they're getting treated equally under it, fairly and consistently. It needs to be simple. You need to be able to administer it yourselves with professional planning staff, on city staff, without the use of consultants to interpret everything that another consultant wrote for you. It should be decipherable. And it needs to be um, simplicity in the sense of moving to tables, moving to illustrations, um, perhaps in some catalyst areas, looking at some form-based alternatives, um, looking at the use of new tools and techniques that may not have been in place in the city before, and using flexibility, providing for exciting design, but also controlling and shaping new investment in a way that's consistent with the historic, cultural, and lived character of the city of Kingston. Our codes reflect the built environment, so we look at what's actually there and 
try to, um, things that exist as of right, in terms of how your community is built, um, should exist as of right going forward. Um, the kinds of mix of uses may have changed over time. Perhaps you want a different mix of uses in an area, or you want to allow for a mix of uses that hasn't happened under some traditional zoning frameworks. And I think you've done a good job of keeping your zoning up, unlike a lot of communities, so it's not as heavy a lift as it has been in some of the cities where we've worked with. I mean, Detroit, for example, we updated the 1960 zoning ordinance it was against the law to build the front lot line in an urban environment. So some of the things that you sort of take for granted, many cities have, have not dealt with. So protecting characters, stabilizing neighborhoods, expecting quality development, planning for it, requiring it, and creating opportunities for infill with realistic incentives. Not giving away the store, but figuring out what can you do strategically that'll get you the right kind of growth, the right project in the right place at the right time, should be easy to do under a contemporary zoning framework. Our approach is two phases, and to be completely honest with, honest with you, we couldn't figure a way to do full zoning rewrite and a full comprehensive plan within the budget. So we broke it down into two pieces. Um, the first piece, phase one, we'll look at priority issues coming from the planning process. It's kind of hard to budget for zoning when you don't know what the plan will be yet. So we don't really know what changes we might need to um, count on. So what we did is we tried to streamline the planning process as much as possible, keep some resources on the table for phase one, so that if there are red flag issues, if there are things you really feel need to be addressed right away, we can give you our guidance to address those, and we can set up the identification of issues so that they can be done in the second phase, or they could be done internally by your own city. Um, so it includes a kickoff with the um, city staff, planning board, zoning board of appeals, um, addressing the priority list of provisions, and then regular meetings with staff to get that first phase complete. The second phase picks up any other issues. So that would include cleanup of anything, new definitions in phase one, um, really sort of getting you to um, a, a good, consistent, with current legal trends and fashions, uh, as well as dealing with priority issues. Phase two would deal with anything else that didn't get dealt with in phase one. There you go. Um, so the completing the zoning code revision, circulating the draft code to city stakeholders, meetings around zoning, um, changes, they can take a little bit of time, depending upon how significant the changes might be. And that's something that we do a really good job at, handling that, explaining that, making it understandable to people why you might choose to go in a direction that might affect their property rights or their property um, in terms of its composition. I'm not saying we will go there, but a lot of times cleaning up zoning, even if it's just that, will affect people individually. And we have to be sensitive to that. We have to be able to communicate the issues in a way that people can understand. Um, we usually do a summary brochure for the community. Really, this is something that people need to look at. They don't necessarily want to read the whole quote. They want the highlights of what's being handled, why it's being handled, and how it's being changed. And then presentations to the community and the Common Council. Um, we have, well, fingers crossed Poughkeepsie will adopt soon. Um, not that code that it's been adopted. And um, they have all been um, passed with a significant majority. So we've done our work up front so that um, when it comes time to adopt something as important as the rules of the road that affect every land decision every day, um, you have built agreement around it. And then we would do seeker and the other adoption So in the end, what counts? What counts in our experience, consultants and communities, is sincerity, respect, approachability, and authenticity. We are who we are. You'll ask us questions, we'll answer them honestly, we'll show up, we'll tell the truth, we'll find a way to communicate with everybody. Um, we'll get phone calls and we'll answer them, we will get letters and we'll respond. We'll talk to the press, we'll talk to each of you for as long as you would need us. Um, no clock runs once we start a project. If we work until it's done, and we try to follow the scope of work, but I will tell you honestly, typically, if we're going to err, it's going to be on the side of having gone a little too far, never going too short. If we set a budget and we sign a contract, if it goes over, it's our problem because we should have managed our time and our resources. We don't have budget add-ons or delays. That has never happened in my company. It will never happen in your company. So if we make a commitment to you to do a certain thing in a certain way in a certain We have a really great team and we're very flexible. We've worked together before. We get along well. It's like dealing with one firm, one 
affirm all who love what they do. Um, we have success in communities of similar size, similar character, dealing with similar issues. And we have a way of bringing real people's ideas into something that's broadly supported with consensus, not just consent, but real 